Hello and welcome to the channel. When 46mm version of this watch came out, the pictures looked absolutely great, but the size just didn't make sense to me. So when the 42mm version came out, I bought it straight away. Now, I couldn't get any vouchers or discount codes, so I ended up paying full price. So in essence, not only the watch got a little bit smaller, it actually got a bit pricier. So, of course, the question is, is it worth it and should you bother? Well, let's take a closer look and find out. Hi and welcome to the channel. If you're already subscribed, thank you and very warm welcome back. And if you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It does help us to bring you more reviews. In the usual format, I will cover the price, the dimensions and specifications of this watch. Also, as usual, I will share my first impressions. And in addition to my 7-inch wrist shots, I will throw in a couple of shots on the just over 6-inch wrist as well. So the viewers with a slimmer wrist can get an idea how this watch will look. I only had literally a few hours to get myself familiar with this watch, so I will do my best to cover all the details, positives and negatives. And a spoiler alert, there are some negatives that I think the potential buyer should be aware of before pulling the trigger on this one. Also, there might be some negatives, but it is still a good looking watch, so I'll be posting some pictures on our new Instagram account, so check them out, the link is in the description. Before jumping into the details of this unboxing, a word on the actual design of this watch, and why I didn't hesitate for a moment to buy it, and why it will most likely stick in my collection. This is of course a homage to famous Ademar Peguet Royal Oak, which is considered to be the first sports luxury watch, and was designed by Gerald Gente, who also designed, or one way or another influenced, the designs of such icons of horology, like Patek Philippe Nautilus, Omega Constellation lineup and IW Seal Engineer, to name some. For the record, the Royal Oak and Stainless Steel case retails for around $30,000. And I think Cadison deserves some credit here for not bluntly copying the Royal Oak and slapping its brand name on the dial, but rather putting their own spin on it, which is not that simple and usually not that cheap to do either. Quite a few Swiss brands came up with homages to Royal Oak. One of my favorite, for example, is Maurice Lacroix Icon in 42mm. The automatic version of that watch will set you back by about $1,500. Closer to AliExpress, there is also an option from San Martin, which also looks like Gerald Gent influence, but more of a Patek Philippe Nautilus homage. But that one is not cheap either, and will cost you between 300 and 440 US dollars, based on what movement you choose. So, back to my initial point, why I didn't hesitate to buy this watch, because when it comes to 70 to 80 US dollar segment, Cadison has a very unique proposition of Royal Oak influenced and not cloned Camage, which makes use of reliable Seiko movement and actually looks very attractive. Well, at least in my books. Now, with this out of the way, let's take a closer look at this interesting watch while still keeping in mind the price point. I paid $79.99 for this watch on AliExpress. However, Cadison offered some sharp discounts on the 46mm version of this watch, and I don't see why they shouldn't do the same for the 42mm variant as well. So, I would recommend timing your purchase for the next flash sale, which, as we know, is never too far away on AliExpress. The shipment was quick, as most of my recent AliExpress purchases delivered to the UK from China in just over a week. In the box we have well-packaged Cadison box, a user manual, stamped but not dated 12 months warranty card, a branded wipe cloth and a tool for bracelet link adjustment. And of course, the watch. Ok, measured across the case is as promised 42mm. The fixed octagon bezel is 41.8mm across measured by the corners and 40.7mm measured across the sides. Case height is just under 12mm. We have integrated bracelet, so the bracelet measurement wouldn't exactly make sense, because replacing it with a standard strap will not work with the overall look of the watch. But for the reference, the end link attachment is 20mm and end link width is about 25mm. 
More interesting is lug tip to lug tip distance, which is 48.7 mm, as opposed to about 52 mm on the 46 mm version, making this watch much more versatile when it comes to various resizes. Here it is on my 7 inch wrist. The bracelet tapers down to 18 mm at the clasp. On the fully supplied stainless steel bracelet, this watch weighs 177 grams. As a reminder, the 46 mm version is listed at almost 200 grams, and adjusted to my 7 inch wrist, it is about 162 grams. Dial is very well executed. Clearly, Cadison tried and quite successfully mimicked Adama Pegue Royal Log tapisserie dial pattern. Well, at least when viewed with the naked eye. There is even a hint of sunburst effect, which adds to the nice and rich look of the dial. By the way, if waffle tapisserie pattern is not your cup of tea, Cadison offers just a plain sunburst effect type of dial in blue and grey colors. The applied button hour markers are very similar to AP Royal Log layout and are quite well done in my opinion. We have a minute chapter ring and a date window at 3 o'clock. I like the attention to details of incorporating the beveled edges around the date window, which makes it look nice and tidy. I think there is a slight QC issue with the 3 o'clock hour marker shifted ever so slightly towards the top of the dial. Other than that, the dial is quite well done. Wooding is also well applied, minimalistic and to the point. Hands are nice and proportionate, with minute and second hands stretching nicely almost to the edge of the minute chaptering. Also, even under 20 times magnification, hands look crisp and well executed. There is a loom on hour markers and hands. Loom is fairly uniformly applied, but not very long lasting. And also, it seems to be a bit more prominent on the hour markers rather than on hands. Obviously, I would prefer to be either the same or at very least on the way around. The same as on 46mm version, we have nice and flat mineral glass crystal here, which is almost flush with the bezel. I didn't notice much of anti-reflective coating, however, dial is quite legible anyway. This watch has fixed bezel, very similar to Royal Oak one, which was inspired by a vintage diving helmet attached to the rest of the suit with the screws. Cadison stuck very close to Royal Oak design here, with brushed top of the bezel and mirror polished bevel and sides. And the execution is quite decent, I have to say. Also, I like the different screws that Cadison used here, and I think they work quite well. Also, screws are in alignment with the bezel, which is a nice touch. Moving on to the case, this is where things get a bit more exciting. Stainless steel construction, interesting shape, I like that Cadison went with their own design here, and such a case shape allows for slightly thicker Seiko H35 movement. We have vertical brushed finish on the flanks of the case and combination of brushed and mirror polishes on top of the case. I like the combination of different finishes and shapes, however, I'm not a big fan of such a coarse brushing. I understand the idea behind it, and on a positive note, it is consistent with the bracelet, which we'll we examine in a moment. However, the quality of the brushing could have been better in my opinion. We have a signed crown, the crown is not screwed down, however, Cadison still declares 100 meters of water resistance. I don't see any seal mechanism around the crown stem, at least on the outside of the case, so I will be taking this 100 meters of water resistance with a grain of salt. I will definitely keep this watch away from swimming. We have a screw down see through back case, which is nice, good finishing on the back of the case as well. Lugs and integrated and links create a nice curvature to hug the wrist, even as slim as 6 and a quarter inch in circumference. Just a quick reminder that we have Seiko and H35 movement here. For the time I had this watch with me so far, it proved to be quite accurate. I will do a time graph check in a full review. Crown action is smooth and sturdy. Bracelet. Quite interesting design. And again, Cadison put their own spin here, which is good. The bracelet is simple, yet ticks the boxes of good case integration and also does maintain that subtle blink of the Royal Oak bracelet facets playing in the light. So I'm happy with the bracelet design look, however, that comes at a price and compromises. First, it is of course an integrated bracelet, so we will be very limited to any other options. 
Second, the butterfly clasp is okay. However, the links are about 5 mm long and there are no half links or any micro adjustments. Third, the fit and finish of the bracelet. Well, there is a lot of play in what gives an impression of quite tightly fit links. Well, they are not, so something to keep in mind. Then the finish. The outer sides of the links are sharp and not sharpish, like some reviewers alluded to regarding the bracelets on the 46mm model. No, the links are sharp and, if brushed against the skin, do not feel comfortable, to say the least. I have about 30 watches in my collection and this is the most sharp angled bracelet among all of them. Now, AP Royal Oak also has well-defined facets on their bracelet, however, Adama Piguet did a fine polishing of the edges of the bracelet links to ensure that the bracelet is comfortable. There is nothing like this on the Cadison bracelet. I appreciate that we are in under $100 segment here, but, for example, Pagani Design manages to smooth the bracelet edges and throw in sapphire crystal as an icing on the cake and about the same price point. So, maybe something for Cadison to have a think about. So, a quick roundup of positives and what could have been done better on this watch, in my opinion. Starting with positives, design and the size. I like the overall look of this watch, it is really good. And 42mm is definitely more versatile size. It is also good to see reliable and dependable Seiko NH35 movement powering this unique watch. The dial execution is really good in my opinion as well, at least the blue waffle version that I've got. I really like it. However, things that I would personally like to see improved would be number one, screw down crown. That would give more confidence when it comes to water resistance. Number two, sapphire crystal would be nice too. However, I suspect that would push up the price ever so slightly. Number three, half links on the bracelet would be nice as well. And of course, a more refined finishing of the bracelet and the case. As I mentioned earlier, I understand the idea. However, I'm not convinced by the execution. So, what are your thoughts on the bracelet design and on the overall watch? Please let us know in the comments. And if you find this review helpful, smash that like button and of course subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.